In tonight's Dorchester segment, we put focus on the upcoming city election to share some insights and tell us about more details on the candidates is the managing editor of the Dorchester Reporter. One more time, three, two, one. In tonight's Dorchester segment, we put the focus on the upcoming city election to share some insight and tell us about some details on the candidates is the managing editor of the Dorchester Reporter, Gin Dumshius. Uh, thank you very much for being with us and filling in for Bill Forey again. Thanks. Happy to do it anytime. Ken, uh, you're uh, the author of, of maybe at least one of the two uh, uh, definitive books about the race for mayor in 2013. It seems like such a long time ago. When you look at what's happening uh, right now, especially when you're following the money, does this race look much different? Sure. I mean, the, the biggest difference is there are fewer candidates uh, this time around. Uh, there were 12 in 2013, and there was some super PAC spending. Um, and, and back then, um, there was some some uh, of the super PACs were on TV, uh, but others uh, stuck to radio and they were relatively small spends. Um, if you're looking at it now, you have uh, three super PACs on TV uh, backing Andrea Campbell, Kim Janey and um, and uh, another one um, for for Michelle Wu. Um, and, and there's going to be more to come. I mean, I, I think, uh, especially after the, the preliminary, whoever, whoever the, the, the two people are, there's going to be a, uh, I don't know if tsunami is the right word, but there's definitely going to be uh, quite a bit of super PAC spending going on. Well, people uh, who, who don't know as much about this as you do, they must be wondering, well, who gives money to these super PACs? So it's really in Massachusetts, two types. Uh, first is wealthy donors, uh, people who have $10,000 uh, to, uh, to give to a, a super PAC. Um, and the, thing, the, other, the other thing to remember about super PACs is uh, they uh, are allowed to spend and raise unlimited amounts of money. Um, what they can't do is coordinate with uh, the campaigns in the race. So they, they basically have to stay in their lane um, and they can, um, they, they can go up on TV, they can do mailers um, and, and spend a lot of money that way. Um, so the two types of, of uh, main, main backers of super PACs in Massachusetts are wealthy donors and unions. Unions can give large amounts of money uh, into pour, pour them into these super PACs. And we saw that in 2013 uh, with Mayor Marty Walsh, uh, when he was running for mayor, he, he saw a lot of union contributions get funneled into super PACs that went up on the air and, and really crushed his, uh, his uh, opponents in the preliminary and his opponent in the final. That's interesting. You, you, you connect the unions to the ads here because in the past, we always thought of the unions as a source of foot soldiers. Well, they, they, they play that role too, for sure. If you're if you look at the the super PAC that's supporting Kim Janey, it is tied to Unite Here Local 26. It's a uh, hotel workers union, um, and not only are they uh, up on TV with an ad, but they're also paying for for canvassers and mailers uh, in support of their of their candidate. Um, so this super PAC is is playing a, a role on multiple levels, whereas some of the other super PACs are almost exclusively on TV uh, or more focused on uh, the the canvassing mailing part of the campaign. Well, one of your, your breaking uh, stories or tweets, at least, uh, is about a super PAC that was just registered lately. Uh, it's headed at least publicly uh, by the former police commissioner, William Gross. Um, so that gives one indication, but it, what about other indications about what kind of an organization that would be? Sure. So, so we're still digging through um, kind of what, what that means. Uh, the, the, one of the biggest differences between now and 2013 is campaign finance regulators um, at the state level, they're an independent agency. Uh, they've put rules in place for the super PACs where they basically said you have to list your top five donors on a piece of mail or on in a TV ad. Um, you, you need to disclose that. Um, in 2013, um, a lot of the unions that uh, funneled the money into those super PACs, um, they, they uh, did not disclose until well after the election, uh, I believe at the end of the year in December. Um, and that's when we found out where all the money came from. So, um, so, so in this in this case, a little different where we can see in not quite real time, but close to real time, the donations that are flowing in and where that money is going. Uh, we can see the the ad buys that they're making, you know, three hundred thousand uh, dollars. We can see how much they're spending on mailers, twelve thousand dollars. It's it's a much more transparent this time around, um, you know, at, at least compared to twenty thirteen. Now, is this the pack where you found some sort of a tie to a company that has a 
clientele uh, with Republican candidates in a, on the spectrum from anywhere from Charlie Baker to people more closer to uh, Donald Trump? Sure. So the, the name of the, the super PAC uh, uh, you're talking about is Real Boston uh, Progress. And uh, so the former police commissioner, Willie Gross, is, uh, is, is the chair of it. And uh, what, they're, what they listed was a phone number for um, a company that is known to have worked with the Donald Trump campaign in 2016 and, and 2015. Uh, they've also worked for Governor Charlie Baker and also Tom Cotton of, of uh, Arkansas, I believe, when he was a, a congressional candidate. Um, so that, that's an interesting wrinkle um, because uh, they also uh, uh, specialize in super PAC uh, financing as well. There's a, a division of theirs that they have that specializes in, in super uh, uh, helping helping with super PACs. So uh, that is something to to um, to watch. Um, Gross has endorsed um, Anissa Asabi George. Um, so uh, I, I, it's it's uh, unless unless he changed his mind, he's not he hasn't returned uh, uh, phone calls or texts. Unless he's changed his mind, that is going to be a super PAC for uh, Anissa Asabi George. Of course, another thing you've done a lot of over the years is, is go to the pre-election forums uh this year most of them are virtual um and there's a there's a, there's a, i guess a disparity in attendance uh, between the, the acting mayor and some of the other candidates for her office but um, um what about the impact of these forums is it the same now as it would have been you know eight years ago or even farther back or, or do you think that's changed in some way well, I think I think the nice thing about the fact that they're online is more people get to participate, right? It's, it is it is hard to uh, get to some of these forums. Uh, I do remember in 2013 running around quite a uh, quite a bit trying to get to everything, um, and it, it's also uh, just a, a different dynamic. It's a smaller group. Uh, we're also we are also in the middle of a pandemic, um, you know. So so uh, uh, for acting mayor Janie, um, she she is dealing with. Uh, 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 a lot of the things that that a chief executive would be dealing with uh, during a pandemic at the same time she's running for a full uh, four year term. Uh, that's not to excuse uh, skipping um, the forums, um, but that is uh, something of an explanation um, with with the forums themselves, a, a lot of them are. Um, uh, they, they get a lot of activists and some of the activists have already made up their minds. Um, so it's, it's a case by case basis in terms of which forum uh, may have the most impact. Um, I think it is important to get the candidates uh, on the record uh, because what happens is what they say in these forums, um, it gives people something to hold them to once whoever it is gets into office. Uh, what about projections on, on turnout this year? And I know there have been some coming out of uh, Andrea Campbell's campaign, but uh, what do you think? Well, it's it's a big question mark, I think. And, and, and in terms of, of kind of what we're looking at uh, day of September 14th, uh, we're going to be looking to see what neighborhoods um, are, are turning out. Um, a lot of it is unfortunately going to have to be anecdotal until, you know, until the evening hours uh, give us some numbers. Uh, because uh, what we've discovered in the past is this, the city starts counting uh, mailed in uh, or early ballots um, that day, and they put them they put them in the um, the the pile with with everything. So that kind of skews the the or messes messes with uh, kind of when you're looking at turnout and figuring out okay, well this neighborhood is doing well. Um, that's not necessarily an indication that those folks have turned out that day. So a, a good chunk of them might have already voted days ago. Um, so that complicates things a little bit. Um, in terms of zooming out and looking at turnout overall, again, it's 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 tough to say because we're using we're seeing early voting for the first time at the municipal level for a municipal uh, election. Um, you know, we could see a higher uh, turnout among young people. We certainly saw that with uh, with the Ed Markey campaign uh, against uh, uh, when he faced off against Joe Kennedy. Um, I, I think there's a lot of variables in play, and it, and it's tough. It's tough to to guess and speculate uh, at what's going to happen that day until until we get there. A lot of people have been talking about this recent poll uh, that Emerson was involved in, and I think Channel Seven as well. And you know, it showed Wu out front, uh, but a lot of people not too far behind her sort of uh, bunched up. The Sipe George campaign says uh, we look good because this poll overstates the progressive vote, but. This poll also took place right after her ad run on TV. How do you think this adds up? 
Well, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think for me, it's, it's the uh, more, more, <laughs> More polls mean more information. Um, we are expecting uh, the Globe to to drop its own poll at some point um, in in the next week or so. So that'll give some clarity about where the race is at, uh, because because the margins are so tight and and the the turnout is unclear. Um, I think it's it's tough to to look at these polls as anything more than snapshots um, with whatever whatever caveats you can add to it. Um, you know, polling is important. Um, I think it 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 tells the, the mood of the electorate. It was instrumental in um, uh, when Boston was considering the Olympics, uh, bringing the Olympics here. And, and, and we, we saw how people felt about that. So um, I, I think polling is important, but it has to be looked at as in, in, in the whole. I, I wanna bring up uh, advice from publisher uh, Bill Forey he says, don't vote prematurely because wait, wait, there's a couple of forums that people can be looking at next week and the reporters involved in one of these. Can you tell us about that? Sure. There are two debates. Uh, one is on September 8th uh, at seven o'clock. Dorchester Reporter is uh, teaming up with the Bay State Banner, NBC10, Telemundo and NECN uh, to uh, to help with with this debate. All the candidates are, are, are participating, all five and um, all five major candidates, I should say. And um, they'll, they'll, uh, it'll be live for an hour. Um, and then that'll follow, uh, that'll be followed by September 9th, uh, a debate, uh, Globe, WCVB, and uh, WBOR are doing that. And uh, Bill had an editorial this week, which I thought made a very good point. Of, there's a lot that can happen at these debates. So, um, it, you know, early voting is great, but it's also good to um, get a, a good up close look at the candidates in a live, in a live format, um, you know, see, see how they react in real time to their uh, opponents uh, that could be uh, determinative for, for a number of people. So I think that's what, that, that's what Bill was trying to say was like, well, you know, let's, let's see how they perform in these debates, especially if you're, if you're undecided, uh, there, could be, there could be something that happens at these debates that uh, could make you change your mind about uh, a candidate. Even closer to home, uh, the reporter has the responses to its questionnaire from candidates uh, for District 4 and the City Council. So if people want to see that and anything else that breaks in the next few days, what's the best way to find it? Sure, you go to uh, dotnews.com. Uh, we've also got the lit drop, which is uh, at dotnews.com slash lit drop. And uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be posting stories as, uh, as uh, the candidates and the super PACs are making, uh, making their news. Thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. Thanks for having me. That was Gin Dumchus from the Dorchester Reporter. We'll have more news in just a moment.